here we are for another week, another chance to connect, to gather together and worship. And we are so grateful to be able to connect with you. Thank you so much for making us part of your weekend. If you've been joining us with Pastor Dennis, he's been leading us through a series called Recalculating, When Life Takes an Unexpected Turn. He reminded us last week of the story of Job, and after everything had been taken away from Job, he was still able to stand and say, I know my Redeemer lives. Pastor Dennis was reminding us that we too can speak those words in confidence because there's nothing that takes God by surprise. He always holds us. If you joined at us at 11 for our contemporary service, you got the privilege to hear Mike Muller speak. He is the son of Pastor Dennis and Sue Muller, and he reminded us of a verse in the Bible that says, we love because God first loved us. He challenged us to ask, do we truly love like God does, without hypocrisy, without judgment, without strings? This week, we begin a new series. We begin a series that takes us on our Lent journey, our journey to the cross, our journey to remind us that Christ came and walked this earth to die for us. We are excited to share this series with you. We are excited that you're here to join in it with us. Now come into the presence of God as we begin this new series called, But God. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be making the announcements this morning. Uh, first of all, uh, there's a new Lenten Zoom Bible study called The Grave Robber starting this week. It will be Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Uh, you can go online for the link. It will be led by Pastor Dennis, Pastors Brand, uh, all our pastors, Pastor Dennis, Pastor Brandy, and Pastor Lizzie. And I am the UM, local UMW president. I would like to welcome you to our March 2nd general meeting. It will be held here in the sanctuary at 1 p.m. Uh, we will be installing our UMW um, officers. We had hoped to do that back in December, but due to the COVID, we had to cancel that meeting. Um, our very own dear Rosemary Barkus will be the speaker. She's a gifted writer um, who has written a book called uh, The Dementia Dance and dealing with her own, um, dealing, taking care of her own love, uh, mother during, um, uh, taking care of her mother during dementia. Um, it will be hosted by our Phoebe, our circle, our Phoebe and Hannah circles. So. Um, please check out the website and the uh, Facebook for other announcements of things going on in the church. There's lots of things going on in this church, lots of opportunities to join in and get signed up, especially during the, this Lenten time. So welcome to Grove City, um, United Methodist Church, the Open Door Church, and um, glad to see you, glad to have you here online with us. And I understand it's going to get warmer this week, so spring is on the way.
call to worship. O oh Lord, as you parted the waters to lead your people to the promised land, may you lead us in this worship time to your presence of your promised land as well in heart and soul and mind. Lead us to you. Let us stand as our choir sings, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. The words will be on the screen. Thank you. 
Mark and Marla so beautiful. This morning's scripture comes from the 15th chapter of Exodus, verses 1 and 2. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he is hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father is God, and I will exalt him. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning again. Uh, Dennis asked me to preach for him. He couldn't be here today. Uh, I'm Clarence Denon. I'm a retired pastor, retired in 2019, and, and we've been attending here since since then. Uh, we usually go to the more early service, so you may not see me, but we enjoy being part of this congregation, and I'm glad that we can be part of you also. And so Dennis asked me to preach. Uh, he was my superintendent when I was in Zanesville, so he, I hope he can trust me with this. It's good to be here. Uh, we heard, uh, read this, this great hymn of praise by Moses as he and the people were on the shore of the Red Sea. Listen again to these words. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My Father's God and I will exalt him. Why were they singing praises to God there on the shore of that sea? Well, they had just seen God's great power deliver them from an impossible situation. They were on the other side, and the sea stood before them, and, and Pharaoh and his chariots were coming to take them back into captivity. And there was nothing they could do, but God delivered them. And he brought them through that water and dry land and brought them into freedom. And so they were there singing praises to God. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. Uh, they were just beginning their journey, uh, coming out of Egypt and going to the land promised to their ancestors. God promised Abraham and Isaac and Jacob this land. And now over 400 years later, God was going to bring them through the wilderness. But it'd be a long journey and they were beginning it. And in a sense, we're beginning a journey now, the journey of Lent. This is the first Sunday of Lent. We have, what, 40 days of Lent plus Sundays beginning with Ash Wednesday. So we're on this journey, and, and journey, Lent is a journey into spring. I was at a meeting a number of years ago, and a preacher told us that Lent means spring. And I had to check that out, and I looked at my dictionary, and there it said, Lent was from a Middle English word meaning spring, and it came from an Old English word which means spring. So it really feels like spring now, doesn't it? Uh, and not quite. We've had some rough weather. Uh, snow and cold single-digit temperatures. It feels like winter, and we're still in winter. Uh, this week, I tried to get my car up the driveway and got stuck and went out to the road to get a run, and I got stuck in the road. I finally got up into the driveway but this ice and the snow on ice is no good. <laughs> but the good news is we're in the journey to spring. And have you noticed that days are getting longer? In the morning, it's earlier. The light comes earlier. In the evening, it's later. Uh, and thanks for that good news about warm temperatures next week. It's, it's coming. It's coming. And before long, we'll see those daffodils shooting up. And we'll see the crocuses blooming. I always love to see the crocuses bloom. Spring is coming, and we're in that journey. But this is also a journey, a spiritual preparation for a celebration of life, the resurrection of Jesus on Easter. 
And in this time, we prepare ourselves to, and we remember what Jesus has done for us and our salvation. So we, we remember Jesus who set his face to go to Jerusalem. And we remember how as he approached Jerusalem, the people welcomed him as the king coming to rescue them from the oppression of Rome. And they cried out, Hosanna. And we remember how in just a few short days, they turned on him. And he was betrayed. And he was placed into the hands of his enemies. And, and the Romans crucified him on a cross. And he died. He was buried. And the journey, though, does not end there. For three days later, he rose triumphant over death. And he frees, he saves all of us who come to him. He delivers us from the powers of sin and death with eternal life. And so Lent is a time we remember this journey. And we, too, can join in that celebration that Moses sang there at the shore of the Red Sea. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. They had been in an impossible situation. Before that, they were slaves in Egypt. For, for years they had come, centuries before their ancestors, and, and over time they became slaves and were oppressed by the Egyptians and suffered, and they cried out to their misery. And the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, and Jacob, and Isaac, heard their cry and sent them a leader to lead them out of bondage. God sent them Moses. And Moses came and confronted Pharaoh the king and said, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, no. There were plagues that came, ten plagues. And after each one, Pharaoh said, no, until the last plague on Passover, when, when the firstborn of Egypt died. And that night, Pharaoh told Moses, go, get your people out of here. And they were ready, and they left. And God brought them out of bondage and guided them with a pillar of fire by night and a glorious cloud by day. And the Lord led the Hebrews out of bondage, out of Egypt, to the shore of the Red Sea. And there they camped. And in the meantime, the shock was over in Egypt. And Pharaoh and his leaders said, what have we done? We've lost all this free labor, these slaves, what have, well, this is what they said. What have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. And so Pharaoh gathered his chariots again, his army, and they went to pursue the Hebrew slaves to bring them back to Egypt into slavery. And when the Hebrews saw what was happening, they were terrified. They cried out. They cried against Moses. What have you done? They said, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? They were terrified. And Moses said, don't panic. Well, that's not quite it. He said, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. And they did. God delivered his people. God said, Moses, move forward, lift up your staff. And he obeyed and, and we're told that the, the glorious cloud went behind them and, and blocked the Egyptians from pursuing them. And the east wind blew and separated the waters of the sea and the path was dry. And Moses and the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea to the other side, to freedom. And after that, the Egyptians pursued them into the, into the sea. But then the waters closed on them, and the army of Pharaoh was destroyed. God 
had delivered his people out of bondage. On Passover, he brought them out of Egypt. And Pharaoh said, go. And, and they went. At that night, they were trapped by the sea. And God delivered his people through the sea. And they, and they cried, they praised God. I will sing to the Lord, for he has highly exalted both horse and rider from his hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Israel never forgot what God had done. It was part, as throughout the Old Testament, how God brought them out of bondage, out of Egypt. Even in the, in the Ten Commandments, just a, a few days later, God put before them these Ten Commandments, and the first one says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. They did not forget that the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob had delivered them out of Egypt, and through the years they would bring them into the promised land, the land promised to, to Abraham. God had delivered them. And God is still God today. And God is able to deliver us today. But we will all face issues, won't we? We will all come to times when we come up against that, that great sea. And there seems to be no way forward, and we struggle and we hurt. We all face the oh, there's issues of illnesses that come, or financial problems, maybe problems in relationships, or problems at work, and we have anxiety for what the future holds, or anxiety for our loved ones. We all will face difficulties in this life. Sometimes we can handle them. We have the resources and the intelligence to work through the normal, ordinary, day-by-day -day things we must face. But it's never wrong to pray to God, is it? God is there to guide us and help us, even in the little things. Nothing is too small for our Lord to, to be concerned about. We can bring all things to Him. But then there are those times when we feel we're helpless and there's nothing we can do. And even when we're at that shore and the water seems so deep and, and dark and cold, the Lord is with us and he is able to bring us through. We look to Jesus and Jesus says, trust me. Jesus says, I will never desert you. I, I think of that in the upper room when those disciples were, were struggling. And it's right before the crucifixion, and they knew trouble was ahead. Jesus had these words of comfort in chapter 14. He says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Do not, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. When we stand on that shore, and it looks like the impossible is before us, God is with us, the Lord is with us, and he is able to see us through the sea into the, the promised land. Well, I remember a hymn, and there's a hymn that's been very special to me all through the years. I don't know when I first heard it, but um, I know I was repeating it to myself often when I was in college, years ago now. Uh, I, sometimes college for kids can be difficult. And I was taking a, a lab and, and other labs, and, and there's times when Murphy Law was very prevalent. Have you ever heard of Murphy's Law? You know, nothing except what's the if anything can go wrong at the worst possible moment. Is that it? Nothing is as easy as it seems, and everything takes longer than, well, you know all those. Uh, I'm not the most talented person when it comes to mechanics and technology and stuff, and, and those were kind of times of struggle, and often I would repeat the words of how firm a foundation to my, myself as I was trying to 
to do what I'm supposed to do. And I believe God helped me through those. Listen to these words again. Uh, they give us courage. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he hath said, to you who to Jesus for refuge has fled. Fear not, I am with thee, O be not dismayed, for I am thy God, and will still give thee aid. I'll strengthen thee, help thee, and cause thee to stand, upheld by my righteous, omnipotent hand. And this third verse really would apply to Moses and to the topic of today, when we're standing at that sea that seems impossible to cross. The, the, the words go on. When through the deep waters I call thee to go, the rivers of woe shall not be overflow, for I will be with thee thy troubles to bless and sanctify to thee thy deepest distress. God is with us, and he will help us when we go through the deep waters. His strength is sufficient for our needs. And so we too can join in with Moses, and the Israelites, as they sing praise to God for delivering them, for God also delivers us. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver is hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God and I will exalt him. To God be the glory. Amen. And let us pray. And we thank you, Lord, that you are with your people, and you help us through difficult times when we don't know the way, you know the way. Lord, help us to trust in Jesus, to put our hands in his hands, and let him lead us along, and our hope is in you. Thank you, Lord, and give us that faith to keep going with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I invite you to stand for a final hymn, Be Still, My Soul. The words will be on the screen, and you're invited to stand if you're able.
glad that you joined us today. I am excited about this series. I love thinking about God doing the impossible. In just a moment, he can change anything. We're excited that you're here too, and we hope that you continue to join us throughout this series. Before you go, we just want to bring your attention to a few things. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we would ask that you download our app and fill out this I am new here survey. Let us know that you are worshiping with us. We would love to be able to say hello, to be able to connect with you. Perhaps there's a ministry that you're looking to get plugged into or a Bible study you'd love to join. If you are looking for Bible studies, you can also find those on our app as well. If you just go down to the adult study section, you can scroll down to the website for adults. It will take you to our webpage and it lays out all the Bible studies that we currently have launching. It's not too late for you to join. Lastly, I want to remind you that through our app, you can also give. Your giving has impacted the lives of the people of Grove City and far beyond. We have some exciting new ministries that are getting ready to start as well, and you have been a part of that. We are grateful. I am so excited for this series, but God, I love to think of God doing the impossible. He can do the impossible in your life. We are praying for you, and we love you so much, and we hope that you have a fantastic week. May the Lord bless you this week, and listen to these words the Apostle Paul wrote to the Church of Ephesus. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Lord bless you.